What's in a name? Well, sometimes it's just somebody else's name. You might be surprised to learn that the catchy names of things you interact with every day are actually named after the creators. So, today we're going to take a look at some things you probably didn't realize were named after people. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other surprising origins you would like to hear about. Okay, time to get weird. Which, of course, takes its name from singer-songwriter Weird Al Yankovic. As any gym rat worth their weight in protein powder could tell you, a burpee is a squat thrust that has an additional step where the thruster stands up between reps. But what your personal trainer may not be able to tell you is how the burpee got its name. Common sense tells many that it has something to do with burping. But although you may bump your stomach during this full body exercise, the burpee is unrelated to the expulsion of intestinal gas, which is to say, it has nothing to do with burps or farts, which are just a flavor variety of burp, the cool ranch of burps. But burpee isn't simply a nonsense word either. It's derived from the decidedly Susian name of its creator, Royal Huddleston Burpee Sr. Someone wrote that down on a birth certificate with a straight face. Burpee, a physiologist who lived from 1897 to 1987, just long enough to see Police Academy 3, first created the exercise in 1939 as part of his applied physiology degree at Columbia University Teachers College. It was supposed to be a simple test to determine one's fitness level, and not intended to be performed more than four times. Today, the burpee comes in all sorts of forms and variations, including the box jump burpee, the dumbbell burpee, the long jump burpee, and the tuck jump burpee, among many others. So find the one that works for you and doesn't make you burpee, out of either end. Guys named Ignacio are often nicknamed Nacho, like the character of Ignacio Nacho Varga, played by Michael Mando on the hit series Better Call Saul. But have you ever wondered which came first, the food or the nickname? The answer is Nacho what you think. The original Nacho man, Ignacio Anaya Garcia, was working at a restaurant in Piedras Negras, Coahuila, near the American border, when a gaggle of U.S. Army wives overwhelmed his capabilities. He needed a lot of food in a short amount of time, so according to his son, Ignacio Anaya Jr., he went into the kitchen, picked up tostados, grated some cheese on them, and put them under a broiler. Pulled them out after a couple minutes, all melted, and put on a slice of jalapeno. Not bad, Nacho! He called the dish Nachos Especiales, or in English, Nachos Specials. They would go on to become one of the most popular snacks in North America, and they've been called Nachos ever since. Antoine Joseph Adolphe Sachs, who lived from 1814 to 1894, survived a life of disasters only to create one of the coolest instruments the world has ever known, the saxophone. I mean, what else could Bill Clinton and Snoopy agree on? While young, the brash Belgian nearly died a dozen times from freak accidents, including ingesting sulfuric acid, swallowing a needle, and being struck in the head by a brick. Two-thirds of that list is tough to do accidentally, so you know he had skill. When Sax grew up, he invented the instrument that now bears his last name, presumably because calling it the Adolphophone wasn't as catchy, and sales would have taken a sharp dive around, hmm, 1939. It first achieved popularity in military bands, then made its way into mainstream music and finally became Melissa Simpson's instrument of choice, and one of the most memorable images of the 1992 U.S. presidential election. As for sax, he also invented the sax tuba, sax horn, and saxo tromba. That is not a joke. The name of the leotard, the nearly ubiquitous form-fitting garment worn by dancers and crime fighters alike, comes from Jules Leotard, who was born in 1838. Leotard was a pioneering French acrobat, and he was known to perform in a sleeveless form-fitting one-piece outfit he called maillot which is French for an undershirt or sports shirt. Leotard succumbed to an unknown infectious disease in 1870, but his eponymous garment didn't enter the popular lexicon until the 1880s. In addition to the aforementioned dancers and superheroes, the leotard would go on to adorn gymnasts, wrestlers, figure skaters, and miscellaneous performers across the world. It is often worn with the tights created by his good friend, Ralph von Leggings. Ah, uh, we might have made that last one up. If anyone in history ever had a cooler name than Italian immigrant Candido Iacuzzi, 
It's Enzo Ferrari. It's a shame those two never teamed up. The exhibit would have been stoked. Believe it or not, the name that has become synonymous with spring break really belonged to the inventor of the popular hot tub. Sort of. His name was actually Yakutsi, spelled with an initial I. But a misspelling at Ellis Island changed the I to a J, and the Americanized pronunciation, Jacuzzi. But the bubbly tubbly that bears his name wasn't initially conceived as a luxury item. It actually began as a treatment for his ill son. Jacuzzi first developed the hydrotherapy pump, which could be used in an ordinary bathtub, to soothe the rheumatoid arthritis symptoms of his 15-month-old son, Kenneth. He later took it to market as a therapeutic device, but in 1968, it became a pool meant for relaxation. The therapeutic effects still apply. Except now, the therapy includes mixed drinks and an iTunes playlist. In 1905, 11-year-old Frank Epperson of California mixed water and powdered sugar with a stir stick and accidentally left the concoction outside. The temperature dipped below freezing, so when he found his mixture, it was solid and had a handle. He called the conical treat an Epsicle. Okay, so it's not the best name, but Franksicle would have definitely been worse. What do you want? He's 11. When he reached adulthood, Frank patented the Epsicle but he changed its name to Popsicle, because by that time, he had children of his own, and they had come to know the treat as their Popsicle. At least, that's the official story. As many have pointed out over the years, it seems far more likely that the now generic name for the treat was a simple portmanteau of lollipop and icicle. But stranger things have happened, like this one time a kid left sugar water out in the cold. New Hampshire native Earl Tupper worked a number of odd jobs before landing at the multinational chemical conglomerate known as the DuPont Company, which would later become associated with a string of high-profile lawsuits involving pollution, water contamination, and fatally poisoning their workers. So maybe a job you want to leave off your resume. Tupper apparently felt the same way. Instead of leaving a legacy of poisoned waterways, Tupper instead gifted the world with the colorful containers that most of us now use to preserve long-expired leftovers in the fridge. Yeah, that's right! Tupper invented and lent his name to Tupperware, the brand of heat and fall-resistant containers that are as common in North American homes as toilet paper and windows. With the help of ace salesperson Brownie Wise, who, despite the topic of this video, invented neither brownies nor wisdom, Tupper made Tupperware a household name. He also made himself a fortune before passing at age 76. We like to believe he was buried in a giant Tupperware container. Although it might seem hard to believe, the mason jar was a life-saving feat of engineering at a time when canning involved boiling wax with glass to create an airtight seal. Because as history has taught us time and again, nothing is obvious until somebody thinks of it. Born in 1832, John Landis Mason was the creator of a jar system, comprising a screw top and rubber ring that formed an airtight seal without having to jump through any wax boiling hoops. He filed a patent in 1858, but it was incomplete, and that would cost him in the form of mass imitation against which he had little to no legal recourse. In the end, the name Mason Jar was the only compensation he would receive for developing the revolutionary food preservation device, and the New Jersey tinsmith died in poverty. You know the saying, save early, save often? The same goes for getting a patent. German engineer Rudolf Diesel created the souped-up engine and fuel that bears his name in the late 1800s. His goal was to replace steam power, presumably because it wasn't awesome enough, and increase fuel efficiency. After the arrival of his inventions, steam power gradually disappeared until the 1999 film Wild Wild West. But diesel engines are still thriving, with fuel 20 to 35 percent more efficient than gasoline. Take that, inventor of gasoline, who we assume was named Sam Gasoline. Unfortunately, diesel didn't stick around long enough to see the full extent of his invention's success. Ironically, he disappeared on a steamship in September 1913. Some believe he may have taken his own life while others suspect foul play. Whatever the case, we're sure he'd be honored to know his legacy includes the stage name of actor Mark Sinclair, better known as Vin Diesel. Many famous inventions were the result of a slow, collaborative effort between several people, sometimes in different countries, working on a single part at a time through trial and error and endless patents. 
That means it's often ultimately impossible to give proper credit to any one person for the creation. But the Ferris wheel belongs solely to George Washington Gale Ferris Jr. Although his creation was predated by rotating pleasure wheels, are we married to that name? The Illinois engineer quickly put together his grandiose wheel after taking up the challenge to devise a main attraction for the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition. Ferris's wheel, as it was then called, was meant to be the American response to the Eiffel Tower, which had been unveiled at the 1889 Paris World's Fair. That's kind of adorable. The theme park attraction fell a little short of that high standard, but it did ultimately become the most famous amusement ride in the world. How many people can ride the Eiffel Tower? If you're stuck in prison, you might as well work on your core. At least, that's what German-born Joseph Pilates believed, who developed his namesake exercise while imprisoned during World War I. Pilates was living in the UK when the country went to war with his native Germany. So he and his compatriots were imprisoned in an internment camp. Pilates spent his incarceration as a fitness instructor and healthcare worker, where he merged mind and body control into a technique he gave the extremely on-the-nose name of Contrology. After the war ended and Pilates was released, he spread his technique to the outside world, opening a studio, writing books, and continuing to teach fitness classes into his 80s. His technique became known as Pilates, and it has attracted millions of practitioners, including that annoyingly fit person in your fantasy football league. So what do you think? Which of these names surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.